Hello, Mr. Claudia here. In our last lesson, we learned how to take the derivative of trig functions, and then we reviewed a bunch of things that we can do in calculus. We did a rate of change question, we found the equation of a tangent line, and we did an optimization question. But the one thing we didn't revisit from calculus was something we spent a whole chapter on, which was curve sketching. So now we're going to revisit curve sketching in today's lesson, but with a function that has a trigonometric, uh, trigonometric ratio in it. So remember our curve sketching algorithm, and I've kind of abridged it here, but you can go back to lesson 8.5 if you don't remember. But essentially you have to find a whole bunch of things before you can graph your, your curve. You need to find the domain, the intercepts, the asymptotes if necessary. Then you have to find the first derivative, which gives you a bunch of things, the max min points and the regions of increasing and decreasing. And then you have to find the second derivative, which also gives you a bunch of things. It gives you the concavity, so concave up, concave down, and the points of inflection. Once you have all that information, you can sketch your curve. So let's jump right in. Can you sketch the function f at x is equal to root 3 sine x minus cos x? Uh, the one thing I forgot to say in this question is we're going to sketch it for the domain between 0 and 2 pi. Right, the periodic function is great, but they do go on forever, so you do usually are going to see some sort of restriction. Uh, so that domain, well, the domain is right there. We've given it. We're usually going to be given it in the question. Step two: We need my intercepts. Well, let's start with the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, you set the the function or the y is equal to zero. So I have zero is equal to root 3 sine x minus cos x. Hmm, I need to solve this. This is a trig equation. Well, cos and sine are a problem. I they can't really combine them. But if I bring cos to the other side, and I have root 3 sine x, and then I divide both sides by cos, I end up with 1 is equal to root 3 tan x. So I get tan x is equal to 1 over root 3. Now, you should be thinking, we've done this a few times now, what uh, angle gives me this trig ratio? What is my related angle? Well, if you don't remember, 1 over root 3, that sounds like that special triangle like this. This is pi by 3. This is pi by 6. This is my 1, 2, root 3. So if I have, uh, what tan gives me 1 over root 3? Well, that would be opposite. So it would be pi by 6. So my related angle is pi by 6. So now you can draw your unit circle. Again, this is all a little off to the side things. When is tan positive? Well, by cast rule, tan is positive uh, when it's in this quadrant and when it's in this quadrant. So the two angles that make that true are pi by 6. And then, sorry, this one should be red. If this angle is pi by 6, then this entire angle here is pi by is pi yeah, it's 7 pi by 6. Pi plus pi by 6. And it's very messy and small, but essentially I find out that x is equal to pi by 6 and 7 pi by 6. Those are my two intercepts. And it required, it wasn't any more difficult than um, finding x intercepts normally, except that you have to solve a trig equation instead of a algebraic, another type of algebraic equation. To find the y-intercepts, I have to set x is equal to 0, so now I have f at 0 is equal to root 3 sine 0 cos 0. Okay, so it was uh, root 3 sine 0 minus cos 0, I forgot the minus there. Uh, sine 0 is just 0, I always think of the sine curve, it starts at 0. and uh, cos 0 is 1, the sine curve, or the cos curve starts at 1, so the uh, intercept here is negative 1, the y-intercept. So I've got a bunch of information about my intercepts, it got kind of interesting. 
Let's continue. Uh, number three is asymptotes. There are no asymptotes. This is some great news. I mean, it's the one bright light because it's not a rational function. Okay, let's continue. So now we're on to the first derivative and all the things that come with the first derivative. So let me find the first derivative. The, that is, uh, okay, root three is a constant. The derivative of sine is cos, and the derivative of cos is sine. Again, some uh, kind of a, a nice perk. It's not so difficult. I'm gonna set that derivative equal to zero to find my uh, critical points. Should I write that to find critical points? So I have zero is equal to root three cos x plus sine x. Well, this is really similar to what I had to do up above with the x-intercepts. I'm gonna bring uh, sine to the other side or cos to the other side, whatever you like. So now I end up with negative root three is equal to sine over cos. Is equal to tan. What is the related angle here? Well, when do I end up with uh, root three? Well, that would be opposite over adjacent. So that would be a related angle of pi by three. Again, I haven't been great with my space management here, but when is tan negative? Well, C A S T, tan is negative if you had pi by three in this quadrant, right? If the related angle here is pi by three, then uh, this angle is going to be two pi by three. Similarly, if you had the related angle in this quadrant, if this is pi by three, then this angle would be five pi by three. Beyond messy, but so I end up with x is equal to two pi by three and five pi by three. No, so I have my critical points. So what is the point of this? Oh yeah, I'm trying to find a sine diagram. So let me draw the sine diagram up here. No, it doesn't go on forever in both directions is the sign of the derivative. It goes from 0 to 2 pi and my critical points are 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Now here's the unfortunate thing. I can't just I can't just uh, factor this, right? It doesn't have a nice factoring thing that I can do here. So it's going to be hard for me to fi fill in my table using the, or sorry, fill in my sign chart using the table that I normally do. You almost have to do it step by step, one step at a time. So to figure out what happens in here, you're gonna have to actually sub in a value between zero and two pi by three. Why don't we try x is equal to pi by three. So if you sub pi by three into the derivative, where is it, right there, you end up with the derivative of pi by three is equal to root 3 cos pi by 3 plus sine pi by 3. That gives you root 3. Now cos pi by 3, if we go back to the special triangle, cos pi by 3 is 1 over 2. And sine pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. That's definitely positive. So you have to do the same sort of strategy here. Let's try x is equal to just pi, maybe. That might be easy. So the derivative at pi is equal to root three cos pi plus sine pi. This is gonna be root three. Now cos at the pi is actually negative one. And at sine at pi is zero. So that's going to be negative. 
So we have a positive, negative, and then for this last bit, we're going to try a number between 5 pi by 3 and 2 pi. I mean, technically 2 pi is part of it, so we could try x is equal to 2 pi. So we have f prime at 2 pi is equal to root 3, cos at 2 pi is going to be 1, sine at 2 pi is going to be 0, so this is positive as well. Oof. So a little bit less fun to fill in the sine diagram, that's for sure. But now look what you have. You have a plus to a minus. So that means I have a relative max here. And you have a minus to a plus. That means you have a min here. So we can summarize these things. Therefore, f of x is increasing between 0 and 2 pi by 3 and between 5 pi by 3 and 2 pi. It's decreasing between 2 pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3 and there is a max at x equals 2 pi by 3 min at x equals 5 pi by 3. Remind me if we do this again I'm going to have to take more space because I really feel like I've crammed in my answer. But now I have some uh, useful information about from the first derivative. Now we're not done. I still have to find the second derivative and all the things that go with that. So I'm onto the back page here and I'm going to do step five. Uh, I'll just write out the first derivative again. It was uh, root 3 cos x plus sine x. Okay, so let me take the derivative of this. Again, not so bad. What's the derivative of cos? It's negative sine. So I'm going to have negative root 3 sine. What's the derivative of sine? It's cos. So really, the function doesn't change too much. The derivative isn't difficult. I'm going to set the second derivative equal to 0 to find the possible POIs. So I have 0 is equal to negative root 3 sine x plus cos x. Should be used to this strategy by now. It's kind of very repetitive. So I end up with sine over cos is equal to 1 over root 3 or tan is equal to 1 over root 3. The related angle here Actually, I think I've already solved this. Tan of 1 over root 3. The answer is pi by 6 and 7 pi by 6. And you find the derivative of cos and sine. Things repeat themselves because they, uh, you get the same points coming up over and over again. Now, I do need to do a sine diagram like I did last time to figure out what's happening with concavity. So I'm going to draw that. Goes from 0 to 2 pi. This is the sine of the second derivative. So I have a point at pi by 6, and I have another point at 7 pi by 6. So I'm going to have to do this situation where I try different values. So here I'm going to try x is equal to 0. That seems like the easiest thing. So the second derivative at 0 is equal to negative root 3 sine 0 plus cos 0. That gives me negative root 3 times 0 uh, plus 1. Negative root 3 times Oh, that's positive. Similarly here, I'm going to try x is equal to pi, so that's going to give me f at uh, f double prime at pi. Maybe I can just figure this out by subbing it in. So I have negative root 3 
sine pi is zero and cos pi is negative one. So it's plus negative one. So I end up with a negative. And here I'm gonna try x is equal to two pi. I have f double prime at two pi is equal to negative root three sine two pi, which is zero uh, plus cos two pi, which is one. So that just gives me a positive. There it is. So I can fill in my sign chart now. I have positive, negative, positive. So not only do I know my concavity, I also know that there's a POI here and a POI here. So therefore, the original function is concave up between negative, no, between, sorry, between zero and pi by six and between 7 pi by 6 and 2 pi. It's concave down between pi by 6 and 7 pi by 6. And uh, there are POIs at x is equal to pi by 6 and x is equal to 7 pi by 6. Okay, Whew. now we've got all the information we need, now it's time to sketch. But there's actually uh, some point, I want to make sure I have summarized all my points. So my x-intercepts, what were they? They were pi by 6, 7 pi by 6, there they were. So it was pi by 6 and 0, uh, and 7 pi by 6, 0. That's 1. Okay, we also need the y-intercept. I think I figured that one out. That was 0, negative 1. Okay, there was a max point that occurs when x is equal to 2 pi by 3. Oh, shoot, I need to know what the y value is. So to find the y value, I'm going to do that off to the side over here. f at 2 pi by 3. I need to sub that into my original function. My original function, if you remember, was root 3 times sine x minus cos x. So sine 2 pi by 3 minus cos 2 pi by 3. Uh -oh. These angles are actually bigger than 90 degrees, so you're going to have to think a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, so this is, you know, if you want to do that thinking off to the side here, this is a unit circle. So pi by th uh, 2 pi by 3 is up here. It's good we spent so much time on the unit circle. So the related angle here would be pi by 3, C, A, S, T. But we're in this quadrant, sine is negative. So we end up with negative root 3 sine pi by 3, and cos in this quadrant is positive. Sorry, oh, sine is the one that's positive. Uh, cos is negative in this quadrant, so it's going to be plus cos pi by 3. So I changed each. Uh, trig ratio to be the related angle and then I was able to use cast rule to find the corresponding sign. Now sine of pi by 3, if you remember that special triangle I drew it once here, sine of pi by 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. So you end up with root 3 times root 3 over 2 plus cos of pi by 3 which is 1 over 2. So you get plus 1 over 2. So you get 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2, which just gives you 2. So that was the max point. I also need my min point, which happened at pi by 6, I believe. Oh, 5 pi by, five pi by 3. 
I have to do the exact same thing I did before. So that would be 5 at or f at 5 pi by 3. So that's root 3 sine 5 pi by 3 minus cos 5 pi by 3. Okay, so uh, what is 5 pi by 3? Ooh, well, that is an angle. It's somewhere out here. If you can imagine, remember again, it's lucky we spent so much time on the unit circle. This is 5 pi by 3. The related angle is just pi by 3. So when is, uh, or in this quadrant, what is sine? Well, sine is negative, cos is positive. So now I have negative root 3 sine pi by 3. I've replaced it with uh, um, the related angle, and I've changed the sine based on cast rule. Cos is positive in this quadrant, so it's just cos pi by 3. Now, sine of pi by 3, we already know this is root 3 over 2. And pi, cos of pi by 3 is, uh, oh, this is, sorry, this didn't change sign, so this is negative. So this is negative half. So I end up with negative 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2, which gives me minus 2. So that's this point here. Okay, and we also know that there's a POI at pi over 6. Now, before you get too worried, right, pi by 6, which is right here. Before you get too worried, we also know that these are intercepts. Uh, right here, right? So this is 0, uh, and there's another one at 7 pi by 6 right here. And again, that's another intercept. So that could be a lot worse. Okay, so now we can finally, we have all this information, I can graph this curve. And first thing I'm gonna do is draw a nice, a nice wide open scale to help me do that. Make sure you're only graphing the domain that you need to graph. So I've drawn a lot here, just so I can uh, take as much space as possible. I'm only going up to two pi. Now it looks like all of my angles are um, fractions of, you know, pi by uh, fractions of the sixth, right? So I'm going to split this in half, and that's going to be pi, and I'm going to split that into six pieces. So, there we go. I can label this now. So this is zero pi by six. 2 pi by 6, which is pi by 3, uh, 3 pi by 6, oops, uh, 3 pi by 6, which is just pi by 2, then 4 pi by 6, which is 2 pi, 4 pi by 6, which is 2 pi by 3, and then 5 pi by 6, 6 pi by 6, 7 pi by 6, 8 pi by 6, which is 4 pi by 3, this is 3 pi by 2, uh, 10 pi by uh, 6, which is 5 pi by 3, 11 pi by 3. Okay, there are all my x coordinates. Uh, again, it's all fractions. Or I just kind of wrote all the fractions as, as I needed to. We have an x intercept at pi by 6, 0, so right here. We have another x intercept at 7 pi by 6, 0, right there. And we have a max or y intercept of 0, negative 1. Oh, I didn't draw those negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2. So there's an x-intercept here. Then there's a POI at this point and this point. The max is at 2 pi by 3, 2. So the max goes up here. And then the min is 5 pi by 3, negative 2. Okay. And the function should be increasing, what did we say, between zero, oh, it should be increasing here, and then decreasing, and then increasing. And then we know that it's concave, uh, it's concave up until here, then it's concave down, and then it's concave up. So it switches at those intercepts. So you can kind of see like it's concave up, and then it's concave down this entire time. It switches again here at POI. Okay. Down, hits that mean, and then, and then it goes up. There we go. So it actually kind of looks like a, 
It looks just like a sine graph, and it's kind of boring, but it is a tough one. We couldn't have done it using our, our kind of trig modeling uh, lesson. We had to use the curve sketching algorithm. I label my min and my max points. I have a POI here, you can label that. It's a little bit anticlimactic, and that's unfortunate. But you can see how uh, it's the same ordeal. There are some things that are easier, there are some things that are harder, but it's really the same strategy. So this is partially a review of all your trig stuff, partially a review of the curve sketching algorithm, which will be something you will see on your IB exam. Your homework for today is page 503, number three to five. So you have three questions to try, just to make sure you're comfortable with this. Good luck with that, and we will see you next time.